is in college. It's not always easy. I graduated in 2001 from Wake Forest University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And I will admit to you, our freshman year, we come in bushy-eyed, I mean, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. We were thinking this is going to be the greatest experience that we would ever have. For most of us, the first time away from home, no curfews, mom and dad not trying to have to wake us up. Uh, we can dictate our own schedule. You can go to class if you want to, not go to class if you don't want to. You can find different places to party, hang out. So this is going to be a great experience. But I'll never forget that first freshman orientation. They all paraded us into this uh, our gymnasium at the time, and there was about 400 of us freshmen there. They said, all right, look to your left, look to your right, and they said about half of you guys will not graduate or finish with who you came in with. We all were laughing. There's no way we all come. Many of us were great at where we were. Schools had done uh, wonderful. We had come from a different places. Many of us scored very high on the SAT and other things that we did at that time. We did not know that they would surely be prophetic and true. It's unfortunate that even after my freshman year, I would say almost close to 30-some percent of those that came in with my class ended up dropping out or having transfer or not going to school. Why? Because they were unable to make the adjustment in that first year. I want to thank you because many of you come from different places, different environments, and it's, it's different coming to a different place. And, and so how you navigated it, I want to tell you, encourage you, tell you God bless you for that because it takes a lot to manage life to manage school and to get through this first year. Many of you are trying to navigate broken relationships. I don't know how it was going into school. You had a relationship from home and then you get to school and things change. How you navigate just new relationships, new people, new experiences. So I wanna to continue to encourage you to continue to strive to do great things. Let me give you just a few things that I think is important that I hope that you will take with you as you go into your sophomore year sophomore year to junior year, junior to senior year, because the aim of GRU and the aim of this whole connection uh, process is to allow you to understand your role of growing and maturing here so that when you graduate, you can be productive citizens in the world. First of all, continue to stay determined. That's some of the things that it takes for you to be successful. Now, most times you realize this, even in life, it's not always the smartest that prevail. It's those that are the most determined. Because you can have smarts, and, and still not make it because you have to be determined to make up your mind that no matter where you are, I'm going to put my head down and I'm going to do what I need to do. Determination is a huge goal to being success. I, I, I tell people my story a lot of times, even though now I stand, I have about four degrees from my undergraduate degree, a master divinity, doctorate degree, and now a new MBA degree. Most people ask me why. Well, I was told when I was in uh, middle school that I would never accomplish anything. I was told that I would never do well in school. And I had to take that initiative upon my heart and my spirit to say, you know what, I'm not going to let somebody else determine for me what I can be. I'm going to determine it within myself. And I took that as a mantra. And even as I've gotten older and church is doing very well, I still look forward to the opportunities to grow, to do things well in school. You have to be determined. Also, determination, you need passion. That's why you're here. I wonder how many, how many have chosen a degree? I mean, a, a, a degree program so far, how many? How many still thinking about it? Yeah, I'm with you. It's hard after your first year trying to figure out what you want to be. I came to school, I wanted to be a doctor until I realized I didn't like blood. <laughs> I wanted to, I started out as crazy my freshman year. I wanted to be a lawyer, so my thing was yes, to be a lawyer, go get my business degree until I found out Accounting 101 was not easy. Well, let me say, Accounting 101 not easy. My professor was not easy. And I learned early on that sometimes it's not just taking the class, it's learning to take the right professor. But that's free advice, hopefully you'll take that, do what you need to do with that. And I had to learn, I had to follow my passion. So I was able to now navigate the sociology. I'm a sociology free law uh, minor from Wake Forest University. So I realized I had to follow my passion. I enjoyed growing and learning people. And it began to help me as I got older. Now into the profession that I'm in now as a pastor, I deal with people. I deal with people every single day. I see people at their best and I see people at their worst, and that's part of what I do. It's my passion. If you're gonna ever succeed in life, succeed in school, follow your passion. Make sure you do what you're supposed to, but make sure your heart's in it. Don't do it because you're trying to chase money. Don't do it because you're trying to chase checks. I will be honest with you. Don't do it just because you're trying to chase grades. Because many times we make decisions, I wanna see if I do the best grades. But understand a lot of times in school, especially in college, it's about the experience. So always follow to be determined, have passion, but also don't be afraid to try new things. That's what school is for. That's what you're here to grow for. 
don't follow a normative path. I wish that there were some things that I would have done differently. If I have one regret in life. The only regret I had in life is that I had an opportunity to study abroad when I was at Wake Forest University. I got chosen to go with a group of students to Japan. But because I felt like I wanted to stay around and kick it at the campus apartment and just kick it for those four months in school, I told them no. It was all expense paid. I would have a chance to go to Japan. But at that time, I had no worldview. I just saw life. I thought I'd kick it with my line brothers and just have a good time on campus. And if I have one regret, it's because I did not embrace that opportunity. If I go back in time, I would have embraced every opportunity that I had in school. A free trip to Japan to study for three and a half months. You never know what could have happened. I could have got the iPhone before the iPhone even came out. I don't know what would have happened. I don't know what would have came out of that experience. And I really kicked myself because I really felt like I missed it. So ever since that point, every chance I get, I try to explore every opportunity. Don't be afraid to try things. Don't be afraid during the summertime, wherever you go, some of you may be going back home. How can I get an internship? How can I do something that's going to enhance me? Maybe I'll try something different. You never know what's going to happen just out of that new experience. It could birth a new passion in you that could ultimately change your life's course, your life's decisions, but also put you on a life of, of a pursuit of success, pursuit of happiness that you never would have thought you had before. Don't be afraid to get in new cliques and learn new people. Don't be afraid to try different things. That's what makes school school. It's this opportunity now that you get to learn, that you get to grow. Because trust me, in four years when you graduate, you go into the real world, it's a whole different thing. Bills got to be paid, you got to cook food, all that rest of that stuff that grown folk have to do that we take for granted. I want you to know now, don't be afraid to try different things. Don't just always take classes within your own discipline. Try different stuff. Even if you got an audit, try it. You never know what you're going to experience. Go see some stuff you never thought you would have. So those things I really hope, I know it took you a lot to get through this first year. And once again, I applaud you, but continue to stay determined, follow your passion, and try new things. And I guarantee you, it will once again enhance this process as you move from sophomores to juniors, juniors to seniors, and then graduating from there to do tremendous things. Thank you for a few moments just to share, and I appreciate this opportunity to come. <laughs> Y'all need to come accept your own awards now and give, give speeches. Um, Y'all did a great job. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for all y'all have done all year. Thank you to the graduate assistants who can't be here tonight because they're in class. They work all day and then they go to class in the evening. Um, and thank you to Chelsea for coming in mid-year and rescuing everything and making it so much more fun for y'all. Um, I wish I had the opportunity to spend more time with y'all this year. That's my biggest regret, um, and I'm going to miss y'all so much. Um, so to stand up here and to see y'all, uh, what you have done in the past year, um, to see our future leaders in this room, to see our future RAs, our future mentors, it is just outstanding the amount of growth that y'all have experienced over the past year. We always tell your parents at orientation, when you drop them off at move-in, when they come home for Thanksgiving, they are not the same student. They are going to look completely different. And it's not because of the freshman 15. It's because you grew up really quickly. And not only did y'all do that through Thanksgiving, you've done it all year long. So you should be very proud of yourself. Let's give you y'all a round of applause. And many thanks to Dr. Goodman, who's unfortunately not here right now, but thank you for imparting his words of wisdom onto y'all. Um, I typed up a little something. I'm going to attempt to not veer off of it, so please forgive me if I'm looking down. But. As y'all have learned this year, success is 10% inspiration and 90% perspiration. Um, welcome to adulthood. That's the formula for the rest of your life. But can you believe it? You've already accomplished 25% of your academic career in college. 25%. Does anybody get on jack tracks and see how quickly that goes by? That's amazing. You should be very proud of yourself. We never said your first year was going to be easy, but we promised it would be worth it. And this is a wonderful, intimate gathering this evening, and I hope that y'all get to celebrate uh, with more of your friends and family the rest of the couple weeks you have here. 
The easy thing to do this year would have been to give up. You've experienced a lot of hardships, getting the first bio test back, <laughs> fighting with roommates, <laughs> learning how to cook and not get the kitchen full on fire. You've learned a lot. The easiest thing to do definitely would have been to give up. But the greatest things in life are earned. You've gotten through the most challenging part of your four years in your undergraduate academic career. You've done it with flying colors, and you should all give yourselves a round of applause.